Nearly a decade after the Arab Spring, a new wave of protests is underway in the Middle East and North Africa. Hello, I'm Arnand Naidu and this is The Heat. The year was 2010 when a young Tunisian street vendor set himself on fire. It was an act of protest and desperation leading to what became known as the Arab Spring, a political uprising across the Middle East and North Africa. But while the movement may have ended three years later, many of the grievances, including corruption and the desire for political and economic reform, remained. Fast forward to today with violent clashes taking place in Lebanon, Iran and Iraq and new leaders now in Algeria, Sudan, and Tunisia. For more, we turn now to CGTN's Adel El Makruki in Cairo. And Adel, are we witnessing a second Arab Spring, or are these current protests different from the ones that took place before? Well, there are very big similarities if we want to compare. You've mentioned uh, Lebanon here. We've had seen protests in Sudan and Algeria, all raising the same slogans, um, freedom, better life or better or, or break bread uh, and make sure to end corruption. It's very similar corruption to what we've, uh, very similar calls to what we've seen in 2011. There is um, a similar wave going on and it's mainly dominating in the countries that have not seen uh, an attempt for protest during 2011. These are the countries um, that have somehow managed and were relieved that they have managed or dodged the 2011 Arab Spring wave. Um, so in terms of demands, they're very similar. In terms of geography, of course, it's quite different. We're seeing an expansion and we're seeing also the reaction of the protesters and the expectations from the government's reaction are quite similar, uh, are, quite, are much different and more advanced than what we've seen in 2011. It seems like the protesters have gained a lot of experience and a lot of expectations from seeing their fellow Arab nations um, doing and moving uh, since 2011. 2011. So Adel, we've already seen some political change in Algeria, Sudan and Tunisia, but what about Egypt? Uh, where else are we likely to see some changes? Well, Egypt, there have been uh, attempts for protests a month back. Um, some online um, uh, businessman was calling for people to rally. Very few turned out in the streets, and the government quickly managed to gain control. Um, it is not very likely to see any attempts happening by any mean. The government has quickly realized um, that there might be some public frustration, especially with the economic status. and just after these protests, which, as I mentioned, were very few in terms of numbers, the government did massive changes. It added about 1.5 million Egyptians on the subsidies um, list. It's promising cabinet reshuffle. It has um, decreased the, the, the prices of gases um, in all across um, the country after increasing it several times. So it seems that the government um, realizes that economic pressure is has been the trigger actually in most of the Arab nations that faced whether we're talking about the first wave or the second wave of these protests and the government definitely wants to have a steady political system and not go back to the tarnished economy that has been caused by the political instability and therefore it is trying to maintain um, the frustrations financially and economically to maintain political stability so it is not very likely to see so and in terms of reaction or in, in ballot numbers. Um, President Sisi appears to have, be having a strong popularity in the street. The parliament, he has dominance uh, in the parliament. All, almost the entire parliament is supporting him. And um, the last elections he has won in a landslide victory. So in terms of support, um, uh, support he has popularly, um, he has millions, tens of millions supporting him in terms of the numbers. If we want to take a look at the um, constitutional referendum or the last presidential election. Thanks, Adel. That's CGTN's Adel El Makruki reporting from Cairo.